You're welcome to today's climate report from the Nigerian Meteorological Agency in collaboration with the World Meteorological Organization and Climate Central as we take a look at climate projection of some major cities in Nigeria by 2100. Now from the pre-industrial times, the changing climate has affected our cities tremendously with the resultant effects in rising sea levels, desertification, coastal erosion, and floods exacerbated by heavy rains, as well as anthropogenic activities like gas flaring, fossil fuel burning, carbon emissions from cars, industries, generating sets, and indiscriminate deforestation. Now, this has been on the increase, leading to a rise in temperatures over the country. If this continues unchecked, it will be disastrous by the end of the century. Lagos, for example, is experiencing severe flooding incidents brought on by heavy rains over the colored areas along the coast with human casualties, destruction of properties, and displaced aquatic eco-life. Now, increased frequency of extreme weather events like heavy rainfalls continue to make flood-prone areas susceptible to health impacts like waterborne diseases such as typhoid fever, cholera, and hepatitis A, and also vector-borne diseases such as malaria, dengue fever, and yellow fever. In April 2017, extreme heat waves led to thermal discomfort, heat stroke, and a severe strain of meningitis that affected Kano and some cities in the extreme north spreading down to the coastal cities. With this happening in 2017, you can imagine the scenario by the end of the century when temperatures are projected to be higher than they are now if carbon emissions continue unchecked. If we don't work towards carbon emission cuts, Lagos, which has a present average maximum temperature of 29.8 degrees Celsius and Port Harcourt at 29.9 degrees Celsius, could feel like present day Ouagadougou in Burkina Faso, which has a present average maximum temperature of 32.8 degrees Celsius. But if emission cuts are moderated, Lagos would feel like present day Chad at 31.5 degrees Celsius, while Port Harcourt like present day Kano at 31.7 degrees Celsius. Let's take a look at this scenario. Without cuts in greenhouse gas emissions, Kano, which has a present temperature of 31.7 degrees Celsius, could behave like present-day Niami in Niger at 35.3 degrees Celsius. But what happens with emission cuts? Kano would behave like Giza in Egypt at a present temperature of 33.7 degrees Celsius. Similarly, Ibadan at 29.6 degrees Celsius without moderate emission cuts could feel like present day Ouagadougou in Burkina Faso, which has a present maximum high of 32.8 degrees Celsius. But with moderate emission cuts, Ibadan could feel like Brazzaville in Congo, which has a present maximum temperature of 30.4 degrees Celsius. According to a study carried out by the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, Port Harcourt, which has an average maximum temperature of 29.9 degrees Celsius, could feel like present-day Ouagadougou in Burkina Faso at 32.8 degrees Celsius without emission cuts, while Kaduna at 31.9 degrees Celsius could feel like present-day Niami at 35.3 degrees Celsius. What happens with moderate emission cuts? Port Harcourt at 29 degrees Celsius could feel like present-day Kano at 31.7 degrees Celsius, while Kaduna would feel like present-day Giza at 33.7 degrees Celsius. Talking about Abuja, the capital of Nigeria, without emission cuts, Abuja at 32.9 degrees Celsius could feel like Niamey at 35.3 degrees Celsius, but if emissions are checkmated, it will feel like Aleppo in Syria with a temperature of 34.9 degrees Celsius. Presently, climate change is already exerting immense pressure on the environment, thereby leading to increased disaster. 
So how do we curb emission of greenhouse gases? For every one tree you cut, plant two or more in its place because they aid in absorbing these greenhouse gases which warm up the atmosphere. Then on the part of the government, policies on gas flaring and emissions should be put in place and strictly adhered to. On individual levels, be energy efficient by changing light bulbs to compact fluorescents or LEDs. And also monitor energy consumption by unplugging computers, television sets, and other electronics when not in use to leave a better environment for future generations. Also avoid fossil fuel burning. Thank you. El cambio climático es el desafío más apremiante que enfrenta la humanidad. La evidencia científica indica que la tendencia en el aumento de la temperatura del planeta se atribuye en gran medida a la actividad humana. Los impactos del cambio climático ya son una realidad en las ciudades, donde se genera el 70% de las emisiones totales de gases de efecto invernadero. Además sabemos que hacia 2050 cerca del 80% de la población del mundo vivirá en otros centros urbanos, por lo que la batalla contra el cambio climático debe iniciar en las ciudades. De no tomar acciones ahora, las consecuencias podrían ser catastróficas para el medio ambiente y se afectaría en gran medida la calidad de vida de todos los habitantes del planeta. Afortunadamente podemos evitar que estos escenarios se vuelvan una realidad. Cada vez son más las ciudades del mundo que han asumido el compromiso y la responsabilidad de tomar acciones concretas para hacer frente a este reto. Más de 600 ciudades que representan a cerca de 500 millones de habitantes en el planeta se han comprometido a mitigar las emisiones de contaminantes responsables del cambio climático. Debemos repensar el modelo de desarrollo de las ciudades hacia un desarrollo verdaderamente sustentable que además contribuya a reducir inequidades sociales y promueva la equidad de género. Invito a las ciudades del mundo, a los ciudadanos, a trabajar juntos por un futuro sustentable, resiliente y bajo en carbono. Estoy convencido de que con acciones locales podemos alcanzar metas globales y lograr un mundo mejor para nosotros y para las siguientes generaciones.